Welcome learners in today's chemistry lesson. Your teacher is Martin Bunguswa. We are presenting to you right from the UPAC Command Center where the top notch television is hosted. In today's lesson, we discuss the chemical properties of alkanoic acids. We have looked at the physical properties. We saw what happens as we move down the homologous series. And now we start on the chemical properties. Number one, alkanoic acids are weak acids. A weak acid is one that dissociates partially in water to yield fewer hydrogen ions. And because they are weak acids, when you put blue litmus paper in their corresponding solution, it will change color to red. However, the pH, because they are weak acids, they have a pH of around 3 to 4. Reaction with metals. Being acids, they react with metals to form salt and hydrogen gas. And the salt that will be formed will be named after the alkanoic acids. If you recall the topic on salts, we said that salts of sulfuric acid are called sulfates. Salts of hydrochloric acid were called chlorides. And salts of nitric acid were called nitrates. Now salts of carboxylic acids are called alkanoate salts. Sodium, for example, a small amount of it, when put in ethanoic acid, a displacement reaction will take place where the sodium replaces the hydrogen to give us a salt, which is called sodium propanoate, because I'm using propanoic acid. When I use magnesium, I'll get magnesium uh, propanoate. The only difference is the way we write the formula of the salt. Magnesium, remember, is divalent with a valence of two. So when I'm writing the formula here, the two is placed here and there's a magnesium there. It can also happen if I repeated the same experiment using uh, calcium. Now, the difference between the salt that is formed when an alcohol combines with the metal and the carboxylic acid reacts with the metal is that for the carboxylic acid, there will be two oxygen atoms. That's why I can get a sodium propanoid. But for alcohols, it was sodium propoxide. So get to know how to name. And in both of them, there is evolution of hydrogen gas. And hydrogen gas will be tested by using a burning splint. So we can say there will be effervescence of a gas that extinguishes a burning splint with a pop sound. Another type of a reaction that alkanoic acids undergo is called neutralization reaction. A neutralization reaction is one in which an acid reacts with a base to form a salt and water. Look at the examples that I've shown you on the screen. When you react potassium hydroxide and methanoic acid, you get a compound called potassium methanoate, which is written as H-cook. The other word is not cook, it is C-O-O-K. Then you get water. If I use calcium, I'm going to get calcium propanoate. All these ones are called alkanoate salts. As we shall see later on, Salts of carboxylic acids with very long chain carbon atoms are very useful in the industrial manufacture of cleansing agents. And that one is going to come in a little while. Next type of property is the reaction with the carbonates and hydrogen carbonates. Carboxylic acids, just like normal acids, can react with carbonates. They can react with hydrogen carbonates. And in the reaction, there is formation of a salt and water. And also there is formation of carbox, uh, carbon 4 oxide. Now the equation for the reaction that takes place when I react a carbonate or a hydrogen carbonate with alkanoic acid is simply the same way like when alkanoic acid is reacted with metals. For calcium, 
carbonate and methanoic acid are form calcium methanoate. For so, for sodium carbonate and ethanoic acid are form sodium ethanoate. And if I use butanoic acid with magnesium carbonate, I'm going to form magnesium butanoate. These ones are called salts. So what observation is made if you add a carbonate or a hydrogen carbonate to a carboxylic acid? The observation will be effervescence of a gas that forms a white precipitate with lime water. That is a theoretical way we can put it. Now, when we are doing it practically, we can observe effervescence of a gas that can put off a burning spleen. That gas could be carbon four oxide. In the context of what you're discussing, there is formation of carbon four oxide. That now means that uh, when you be doing your pr practicals, when you be given an organic substance, you can tell that this substance contains a COO functional group by maybe adding sodium hydrogen carbonate. There will be formation of bubbles. You can also use litmus paper because these substances are acidic. They can tell you that it is an acid. But you can check for the pH of the substances by using universal indicator, which is either a paper or a solution. If it's a piece of paper, you dip it inside the solution. But if it is a solution, you add a few drops. And when you add the few drops, you'll check the color. There'll be the color change. And the color change is not satisfactory to confirm that it is an CD compound, but you check the color against, you match the color against the pH chart which will give you the exact value of the pH, where pH stands for the potential of hydrogen. The other chemical property is called esterification. If you remember when you are doing alkanos, we discussed that acids, carboxylic acids, can react with alkanos, and the reaction produces a compound that has a pleasant smell. And the category to which those compounds belong is called esters. So when we are discussing about the esterification of carboxylic acid, it is not different. It is exactly the same as the one that we are discussed for alcohols. That when I react methanol and ethanoic acid, I get a compound called uh, methyl ethanoate. If I react propanoic acid with ethanol, I get ethyl propanoate. And you check on the way we are able to write the formula of the carboxylic acid and the formula of the alcohol and the formula of the ester. As we had discussed in the earlier edition, suppose you have been given a carboxylic acid. Suppose you have been given an alcohol, you are told, write the formula of the ester that is formed. You said, if the alcohol contributes the hydrogen, the carboxylic acid can be the OH. But when you're writing the formula, start with the acid, finish with the alcohol, and that is what gives you what you call esters. Esters are very important organic substances because they can be used to make artificial flavors like strawberry, like vanilla, like mango, like banana, etc. It is simply the right way we mix the alcohol and the carboxylic acid that lead to formation of such compounds. Esters are also important compounds because they are used in the manufacture of perfumes and scents. There's a difference between a perfume and a scent, but all of them have a characteristic pleasant smell. And when you are referring to esters, you talk about pleasant smells and not sweet smells. Because you cannot smell sweetness. Finally, what are the uses of the carboxylic acid that we have just discussed? One of the uses of carboxylic acids in the manufacture of drugs and chemicals, like aspirin. Remember, aspirin is a drug which used to be, uh, which used to be for a painkiller. But nowadays, it is not over the counter because of its side effects. It is only under prescription, but it is made from that. It is also used in the manufacture of synthetic fibers like nylon and terulene, which we are going to discuss when we get to applied organic chemistry. It is also used to make flavors for food. 
Like if you look at the containers containing some of the canned food and other food, they are usually written preserved using benzoid salts. So these are usually carboxylic acids. So benzoic acid commonly is used in the preservation of food. You have salads, vinegar, etc. So all this information, students, you will find them again in this advanced book, which is called The Chemistry Guru. It is the best-selling book in the whole country of Kenya. Every student in every school has a copy of The Chemistry Guru. So if you do not have such like a book, make an effort to get it in any of the leading bookshops in this country. All the questions now touching on industry, on organic chemistry has been summarized so well in this book in form of a flowchart, which is takes what you call the octopus approach to summarize all the processes that are cans, are kins, are kinds, are canos, carboxylic acids undergo. You will find it in this book between page 200 and 71 up to the end. The questions are numerous. You cannot complete them in a day until you make chemistry enjoyable.